G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. And in this bed here, I've got some brake light potatoes growing. It's something different. I've never grown them before. They're a shiny red potato, red skinned potato. Look a bit like a brake light. I thought, you know, that's an exciting potato to grow. I don't see them in the shops. Why not have a crack at it and see how they go? It's towards the end of the growing cycle now. The potato plants have started to die off and that's the sign that it's ready to harvest. So I'm gonna get stuck into it, start harvesting. And when I harvest them, I'll talk about tips on how to grow them, particularly in a subtropical climate and also several other things that I think will interest you. Let's hope that we get a good harvest out of this. All right, I'm gonna use this pitchfork here. First of all, I think I'll just pull up. Oh, oh, there you go. Pulling them up and up comes a couple of potatoes. They are red. It's a glorious skin on it. So shiny and beautiful. That one there's a little bit eaten. Probably slug damage or something. But anyway, yeah, I can pull up the plants first, I think and I'll just start collecting them on the side here. And then I can give them a wash after I've pulled them all up. Well, it's looking promising. I tell you what, just pull up a plant and up comes these potatoes. I'm getting excited. And yeah, I think the best way to harvest potatoes is with a pitchfork and just be careful you don't spear too many of them as you're going along, but dig down nice and deep and plow through the soil and see if you can pull them up that way. They're not a particularly big potato, I don't think these brake lights, but uh, they'll be lovely. Pull back the mulch here. Oh, that's a, quite a large one. A little bit of slug damage on that one too. Now what's interesting is in this bed, this is the second season that I've grown potatoes in a row. Like normally with tomatoes and potatoes, I like to alternate the crops, grow them in the one position only once only, and then plant something else. In this one third of this raised garden bed, I had some raw blue and kipfla potatoes last season, and they grew pretty well in first season wood chips. So the wood chip was quite fresh. I was surprised at how well the potatoes grew in that new wood chip. But this wood chip now is broken down, so it's, you know, I guess it's 18 months or two years old now, and you can hardly see it well you can see remnants of the wood chip in here but this it's broken down and the soil's a lot richer i can see and and darker so i'm wondering if that will make a, a difference and i'm interested that it's the second season growing potatoes in the one spot has it made much of a difference to harvest or anything like that lots of worms yeah, a couple there fairly close to the surface, that's a nice big one. And that's the other thing. A lot of these are pretty close to the surface simply because when I planted these brake lights, I really only planted them about wrist deep and I didn't hill them up. You can grow potatoes, a lot of people like to put them in a, in a drill, in like a trench, and then backfill and until they even mound up. and. And, and that could give a lot more potatoes and better growth. But in this case, I just wanted just to bury down, just to wrist deep and just see how that method of planting goes. All up, I planted 500 grams per pack, so one kilogram of brake light to potatoes. That was the seed potatoes that I planted. And we'll see how much that one kilogram produces. That one there, she's looking a little hollow it's starting to reshoot and that brings me to the next point that i wanted to talk about particularly in warmer climates i planted these at the end of winter which is still fairly warm starting to get fairly warm in a subtropical climate coming into spring now if you leave these in the ground too long that's why i'm harvesting when they're not quite dead yet in a temperate climate or cooler climates you can afford to leave the plants die off completely and even be completely gone. And those potatoes will still remain in the ground and they won't reshoot. But in a warmer climate like the subtropics, if you leave them in the ground, 
the chances are they'll start reshooting. You can, in the warmer climates, you can plant them at the end of winter so that they get that warmth and, and then harvest at the end of spring after about three or four months, or even at the latest coming into summer. Or you can plant them at the end of summer and get that still enough warmth through autumn and into winter to harvest them into the, at the start of winter. Through winter here in the subtropics, it's still a bit too cold. I mean, you might get away with growing potatoes into winter here or through winter. It's not optimal. And the same thing through summer. You can get away with growing potatoes through summer, but it's not optimal and they don't do too well at all. A lot of the time, the, the extra rain just rots them in the ground and the heat is just too much for them. But that's the thing, they will reshoot. So now at the end of spring, if I left them in for another month, these potatoes here, like one started already, will start reshooting in the ground and they'll grow really well probably the first month of summer, all come up again, but then they'll die off and rot in ground from the extra rain and the extra heat. And so you really waste your whole crop. And that's not what I wanted to do. So that's why I'm harvesting them, even though they're not fully dead yet, the plants. Ooh, that's a nice looking potato. Check this one out. Wait till I clean that up. That is a shiny red. There's still the odd Kipler and different type of potato in here. Some, you know, when you harvest potatoes, nine times out of 10, you leave a few in the ground that you miss and they'll, they'll sprout back up. Oh yeah, see, there's a Kipler, the finger-like ones. That was from last season. I'll keep him though. More little Kiplers. Beautiful, unreal. What I'll do with these ones that I've got these tiny little potatoes on there, I'll throw them back into the bed. I'll just pull them out, leave these tiny rooted things on there. The small potatoes obviously I'll keep, but really tiny ones, I'll take that off, throw them back in, and you never know, they could turn into a really good potato down the track. Just like those Kiflers have reshooted and produced one or two lucky potatoes for us. Better than none. And that came out of nowhere, just ones that I've just missed and left in the ground. What was interesting about this particular crop is that it got attacked by the dreaded potato ladybug, which is really the 28 spotted pest lady beetle. If you're just a, a lady beetle lover, uh, you mightn't think twice about seeing this pest in the garden. You mightn't even think it's a pest, but I can tell you it certainly is. Even though it doesn't necessarily have to be too destructive, if you just let it run rife, it, it will kill your crop off. Actually, I can see one right here, right now, on a, one of the newer stalks. So these spotted lady beetles, they're not too bad in small numbers, but if you get too many of them, what they do is they eat the leaves and then they'll collapse the plant because the plant can't get any energy from the sun with its leaves obviously eaten away. The other thing it also does is you can pick the adults off quite easily, like I've just got that one there, Squ squash it, throw it, kill it, or drown it, whatever you want to do. So you can organically control it. But if you leave the adults on there, because they say there's only one or two per plant, which is fine, you've got to monitor it and make sure they don't lay eggs and then the larvae hatching out can be even more destructive than the adults. And that's what my wife and I did. Nina and I were here for about 15 minutes picking off by hand the larvae that had hatched out. We got them in time before they ate too many leaves. So there was enough energy, obviously, to grow enough potatoes. But yeah, I would recommend you watch out for that pest, the 28 spotted lady beetle. These cracks here, it's a bit like tomatoes. The cracks in these potatoes, see that crack there? That's a really exaggerated one. That there is due to inconsistent watering. So a potato would be growing, maybe uh, affected by not enough water and then it'd get a, a whole big rain down and the potato would swell and you get these cracks in the crack of the heel and the potato keep growing. So, I mean, this is perfectly edible, but just looks a little terrible. You'd never find it in the supermarket, but we'll be eating it. A little bit of potato rot on this one. Might be able to salvage half of it. It's the rot that I was talking about. The longer I leave these in, even maybe next week, most of these could have started getting rot and getting ruined from the extra heat and the extra rain that we get through summer. So that's why I'm 
I was desperate to harvest them right now because I just knew. Oh, I nearly missed it. Potatoes to go through when you're digging for potatoes just a couple of times and sift through that soil. See that one there starting to reshoot again. I'll just leave him in there. All right, that's about it. Well, I'll mulch that back over and I'll grow something new in this bed next season or coming up. But it won't be any tomatoes or potatoes or eggplants, anything related to potatoes. We'll give it a rest. But two seasons in a row, I tell you what, I'm pretty happy with that harvest. There looks to be about five or so kilos of potatoes there. And that's a fairly good return, I reckon, from one kilo. So let's give these a wash up and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat and wrap up. All right, well, I'm really happy with that. Nice and cleaned up. I'll give them a secondary clean inside, of course, but they're clean enough now to take inside and put in the pantry. Nice dark place. That's fantastic. I'm really wrapped with that harvest and I'm pretty happy that I got a couple of extra Kiplers too from last season. That's really cool, but pretty happy overall. I broke a few rules that you, you might think are potato growing rules, like I didn't hill them up I just planted them straight in about wrist deep, like I said. I planted them in the same spot two seasons in a row. That's generally a bit of a no-no. Still worked out okay for me. I think that's fine as long as the soil is rich enough and good enough. By the way, I didn't use a lot of fertilizer or anything like that. In fact, I didn't plant with fertilizer at all and they grew very well. They still had enough nutrients in the ground to support the crop without adding too much extra to it. And I think that's also the beauty of growing in mulch or in particular wood chip mulch is when that breaks down, it adds extra nutrients to the soil and that helps growing those potatoes. Yes, we've had a few pest problems and I can see a bit of cracking here and there and a little bit of rust on some of these potatoes, but peeled, no one will know the difference. They'll be fine. And there's enough of these little tiny ones as well that'll be great in some mini salads. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, whack them down below or comments, whatever. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.